Hello everybody and welcome to this channel. On this episode I'm going to introduce to you an ancient city in Turkey, so stay tuned. Pergamon, the erstwhile ancient Greek enclave, resides in the modern city of Bergame, Izmir. This place is situated on a prominent massif known as the Pergamon Acropolis which formed its citadel. This elevated train with 1100 feet above sea level falls away sharply on three sides, but natural terraces on the south side make a route up to the top of this area. This special topography conferred a strategic advantage and offered natural defenses against potential invaders. This metropolis was founded in the 3rd century BC under the Italic dynasty and became a pivotal hub of culture, learning and art in the Hellenistic world. The Italic monarchs were patrons of the arts and sciences, thus they cultivated a realm renowned for illustrious institutions such as the Library of Pergamon. Many remains of its monuments can still be seen, especially the masterpiece of Pergamon altar. The territory has been occupied by different empires during tumultuous epochs and finally, in 1923, it was annexed to Turkish soil. Pergamon was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 2014. The most famous structure in the city is the Great Altar, which was purportedly dedicated to Zeus and Athena. The foundations are still ensconced in the upper city, but the remains of the frieze are displayed in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin, where the parts of this carving were taken to Germany and have been installed in a partial reconstruction. For the altar's construction, the required flat area was adeptly created through terracing. The base of the altar measured around 118 by 108 feet and was decorated on the outside with a detailed depiction of Gigantomachy, the celestial battle between Olympian deities and giants in high relief. The frieze is 7.5 feet high and has a total length of 370 feet, making that the second longest carving surviving from ancient times. A 66 foot wide staircase cut into the base on the western side leads up to the upper structure, which consists of a colonnaded courtyard. The well-preserved theater of Pergamon dates back to the Hellenistic period and accommodated approximately 10,000 spectators in 78 tiers of seats. At a height of 118 feet, it is the steepest of all ancient theaters. The seating area features horizontal and vertical divisions delineated by walkways in addition to the 2.5 foot wide stairways. On the highest point of the citadel, the Temple of Trajan is perched. This part lies on a 9.5 foot high podium. This edifice was a Corinthian Preptros temple, about 59 feet wide, with 6 columns on the short sides, 9 columns on the long sides, and 2 rows of columns in anti. The Temple of Dionysus was built at the northern end of the theater terrace in the 2nd century BC. The marble edifice rests on a podium 14 feet above the level of the theater terrace and was an Ionic pro-style temple. Its pronaeus was four columns wide, two columns deep and accessed by a staircase of 25 steps. Pergamon's oldest edifice is a sanctuary of Athena from the 4th century BC. It was a Doric Pereptros temple oriented towards the north side with 6 columns on the short side and 10 columns on the long side, each of them is 17 feet high. Despite the ravages of time, 
the foundations measuring around 42 by 72 feet are still visible to this day. A large gymnasium was built in the 2nd century BC on the south side of the Pergamon and designated for male populace. It consisted of three terraces with a main entrance. The middle terrace was around 820 feet long and 230 feet wide at the center. The lowest and southernmost terraces are small and relatively devoid of any structure. The sanctuary of Hera lies on the north side of the upper terrace of gymnasium. Its structure sits on two parallel terraces on the south and north sides with elevations of 353 feet and 360 feet above sea level respectively. The temple of Hera is constructed in the middle of the upper terrace facing towards the south with a 20-foot wide exedra to the west. The two terraces were interconnected by a staircase of 11 steps around 25 feet wide descending from the edifice's frontal facade. The temple was about 23 by 40 feet and sat on a three-stepped foundation. All the other buildings in the sanctuary were made out of trachyte but the visible part of the edifice was marble. The remnants of the inscription on the architrave indicate that the building was the Temple of Hera and was erected by Attalus II. The sanctuary of Demeter occupied an area of 164 by 360 feet on the middle level of the south slope of the citadel. The antiquity of this section can be traced back to the 4th century BC and its entrance was through a propylon from the east, which led to a courtyard surrounded by stores on three sides. In the western half of this courtyard stood the Ionic Temple of Demeter, measuring 21 by 42 feet with a porch in the Corinthian order that was added in the time of Antoninus Pius. Two miles away from south side of the Pergamon, down in the valley, the sanctuary of Asclepius, the god of healing, is situated and was approached along a 2,690-foot colonnaded sacred way. In this hallowed place, people afflicted with maladies could bathe in the water of the holy spring to cure their illnesses. The last Pergamon's notable structure is the Great Temple of Serapis, located about 0.62 miles south of the Pergamon. It consists of a main building and two round towers within an enormous sacred precinct, in addition to the courtyards with pools used for ablutions and stores on three sides. The forecourt of the temple is still supported by the 633-foot-wide Pergamon Bridge. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know your opinion in the comments section, and if you would like, please subscribe to my channel and wait for new videos.